who basically are working in the education field for a long time. They all are QEAC certified agents as well. So, of course, they are the people who can put you in the right uh, courses at different colleges and universities. Uh, we have Priyanka from Sydney. We have Rujda from Melbourne. We have Diksha, who is looking after Northern Territory and Tasmania. We have Naman from Perth. We have Manjinder from Adelaide. And we have Mickey from Brisbane. Welcome, guys. Thank you so much for your time. Really appreciate it. Uh, just got a quick message to all, all our viewers that every single time on, on Fortnite panel, what we have, we usually talk about certain courses. We talk about certain trades. Today, what we're going to do, we have changed the format a little bit. What we have decided as per, you know, your request and your feedback, we will talk about um, five to six different trade courses. So we have basically taken automotive, telecommunication, electrical, cookery, wall and floor tiling and carpentry. So we'll talk about all these courses. We'll talk about the background of those courses, courses, future pathway, job ready program, outcomes and occupations, which, will, which you will be eventually doing in those particular courses. So let's not waste any time. Let's start with our, our hometown, Melbourne. Ruzda, can you please tell us about automotive? Thanks. Thank you, Martin Girish, for giving me this opportunity. So as we are here to discuss about trade courses, I would like to uh, tell our clients that what sort of people, what sort of people from which background can specifically do trade courses. So in general, for the admission, you need to be a year 12 pass out. Uh, so uh, there are no, the English requirement is simple. It's just 5.5, but for what sort of students they are applicable who can do trade courses include students who are already here on student visa, people who come here on tourist visa, they can uh, enroll into trade courses and apply for student visa. People who are already doing, uh, let's say, for example, bachelor's or master's, they can concurrently study trade course. And uh, the ones who recently applied or wish to apply their TR, let's say if I am I'm an applicant and I have completed my bachelor's degree, and I want to have another skill through which I can uh, get more opportunities, I can definitely do a trade course. So talking about the uh, automotive trade courses, there, there is certificate three, four, and diploma. So we have three cyto type of certificate three in automotive. Number one is certificate three in light vehicle mechanical technology. Number second type of course is certificate three in automotive diesel engine technology. And the third is certificate three in heavy commercial vehicle mechanical technology. There are also courses available at certificate four level, which includes certificate four in automotive mechanical diagnosis and certificate four in mechanical overhauling. There are also diploma courses uh, being taught at uh, automotive uh, sector. So there is diploma of automotive technology and diploma of automotive management. Uh, for instance, people, uh, they want to, they have completed a diploma level generally uh, for people who are studying uh, a certificate of a cook trade course and they wish to apply their TR on that course only. They need to study 92 weeks of study, which can vary from college to college. For instance, there are colleges which offer Cert 3 and 4, which is of 92 weeks duration. And there are colleges which offer Cert 3 four and diploma with a duration of 92 weeks, they can apply their TR. So in order to apply their uh, TR, they need to have, uh, they need to do 360 hours of studies plus 360 hours of work experience. Then only they would be able to apply their 485 visa. I'm talking about those applicants who are gonna apply their TR basis on just trade courses. For people who are doing, let's say, bachelor's or master courses, they can definitely study, mostly they study certificate three only to upgrade their skills because that is sufficient. And uh, when it comes to future pathways, uh, they can definitely, this is for applicants who, who are not doing a concurrent course or, or who are just doing trade course. They can definitely, upon completion of the courses, they can definitely uh, enroll into bachelor's of business course. So generally, when we talk about JRP, as I told you, the, uh, you need to have TR or full work rights are required in order to do JRP. So JRP has four steps. Uh, and uh, basically, it requires about 1725 hours of experience to get full skill assessment. 
and as we know automotive industry and the trade courses are very much in demand in australia so that is a very good field in terms of career and money wise as well and a lot of other aspects wise as well so working in the automotive industry is fast paced and exciting career choice with over 17 million cars and motorcycles registered in australia that all need to be served and repaired the automotive industry is currently on the road to more environmentally friendly future and technological innovation will be a crucial feature as cars continue to evolve to meet the needs of a local carbon economy so basically there are various uh, outcomes uh, which student occupations which student can uh, get into once a complete depending on which certificate he completes whether it's light vehicle technology or heavy vehicle so there are different pathways to it you can be an automotive mechanic you can be a motor vehicle part technician you can be a heavy vehicle mechanic so that all depends from uh, the certificate th three level which you complete that is the most important so certificate three level is the most important level and especially people who are doing uh, concurrent courses they mostly require certificate three course only which is hardly for a year so this is a very good uh, opportunity for those clients who are let's say enrolled in masters of engineering or mba they can definitely enroll into automotive or any other sort of trade courses which will give them another pathway for their career as well and definitely they can speak to migration agent and check their uh, future pathway opportunities based on these courses as well so when we talk about the salary range it's highly uh, paid jobs generally they start with on average 55000 55 the package range is between 55 to 70000 per year so that's all mangirish if our clients if our audience has any questions related to automotive qualification or any of our trade courses they can definitely contact us and get further details on the same perfect thank thanks mr uh guys we are live on facebook and youtube so if you have any questions regarding these courses what we talked about is automotive telecommunication electrical cookery wall and floor tiling al carpentry feel free to just message us on facebook or youtube and we'll we'll try to take most of the questions in our today's facebook live and youtube live uh rushda i just got a quick question if a student is studying already in a in a bachelor or masters course uh, can they do first of all what is concurrent can you please explain what is concurrent and whether students can study concurrently uh yes definitely mangirish they can concurrent means that you're enrolled in let's say masters or bachelors program and you are doing a simultaneous course with that so in that uh, you need to maintain your uh, you know you need to successfully complete the main course as well it's not like you're enrolled in a concurrent in a secondary course and you don't focus on the main course so definitely you can enroll into a uh, different trade courses concurrently which means that you will continue with your main course as well you will pass it on time the second course won't affect the progress of your first course it should not in order to do that uh, and definitely a uh, people who wish to do concurrent courses they generally don't need to do the full packaged course which is cert 3 or 4 or cert 3 4 and diploma they just required cert 3 mostly in most of the cases except for cookery so they just require cert 3 and they can get their skill assessment done upon completion of jrp on their tr so definitely uh, they can do this way perfect thank you thank you so much rujda uh, guys if you have any questions regarding um, migration in certain of course we are not qualified migration agent so please send us a message our migration team will definitely get in touch with you if you have any questions regarding the courses or education side we'll definitely cover those ones um, there is there is a question coming up from vishal patel he's asking about telecommunication now the next topic what we're going to discuss um, is telecommunication of course so miki can you please tell us the information about telecommunication Yes, definitely, Mangrish. Thank you uh, for introducing me, guys. My name is Mickey. I'm from the Brisbane branch uh, of Aussie. So today I'm going to be discussing about my one of my favorite courses, uh, which is Advanced Diploma of Telecommunication Network Engineering. Now, although this is a diploma course, uh, let me tell you, 
uh, this course, if you finish this course in two years, yes, you will be eligible for a 485 visa because a lot of students ask me this question, am I gonna be eligible for a 485 visa after this? Yes, if you completed in a minimum period of 92 weeks to two years, <laughs> yes, you will be eligible. Now to enter into this course uh, is the same entry requirement as uh, Rushta mentioned for automotive course is uh, year 12 qualification IELTS 5.5 and a uh, basic LLN test or uh, would be uh, fine as well if you don't have an IELTS, if you are onshore, so you can do LLN test at uh, one of the institutions. This uh, course is available in most of the cities in Australia and a lot of colleges are coming up uh, with the telecommunication course. Now, when we talk about uh, of course, this, uh, again, uh, telecommunication is on a scale assessment level two on the occupation list. And uh, I'll discuss about the job description about this course, uh, what is taught and what you uh, what your job profile would be if you complete this course. So as a telecommunication network engineer, uh, technical specialist, this is a technical specialist uh, job in the telecommunication industry. So after completing this course, uh, you, you work in the field of forecast network growth for enterprise uh, network planning, or you might be into design and managing IP-based networks or implement uh, telecommunication networks, which could be optical or wireless. And it's all about designing and managing optical and wireless network telecommunication systems. So if you have interest in something like this, uh, and if you come for, from a background of IT, for example, you might know more about this or networking background, or if you have done uh, PCM, which is uh, physics, chemistry, and maths in uh, your home country. So you would know what I'm talking about here. Uh, now, what are, what are the job outcomes? There, sorry, there's not much to discuss about the certificate levels on this course as there is only one level, which is an advanced diploma. You only need to study advanced diploma of telecommunication, network engineering. So there's no tier level where you have to, if, uh, that you have to go through. So uh, I'll discuss about the outcomes of uh, this course, uh, telecommunication engineering course. Uh, you could, either become a telecommunication technician officer, which is also a technologist, or you could be a telecommunication network planner. There's also other occupations available uh, as an outcome from this course, which is a network engineering technical officer, a network security manager, an optical network designer, or a radio communication technician. So all these occupations actually come out of one single course of advanced diploma of telecommunication. You can always check with your Mara agent uh, or with us, uh, one of the Mara agents, which occupation would be best suited for you where you can secure yourself a job in the future. You know, you're looking at PR pathways as well. And uh, coming next, after finishing this course, if you still want to go to a bachelor's level, uh, yes, definitely you can go. The future pathway is very good with this course. You can go for bachelors of information technology networking or bachelors of telecommunication engineering, which is available at a lot of universities in Australia. Uh, when it comes to concurrent, yes, you can study concurrently this course as a secondary course. As Rushta mentioned, if you are studying bachelors or masters, you can uh, study this course concurrent and you can also fast track this course, which you can finish it in 12 months time at most of the colleges if you are doing it concurrent or if you wish to finish this course on a 485 visa for example if you already on a 485 visa and you wish to take this course to enhance your skills and get an outcome for a skill assessment uh, from engineers australia yes you can study it uh, on a fast track in 12 months there are only 10 units for this course and uh, it's not a very you know, lengthy course, so it's pretty hands-on. You can finish it in a decent time. If you uh, study regularly and you know, go to college regularly, I'm sure there are a lot of institutions which will also help you finish this course in a time span of 10 months, for example. Uh, and when, when we talk about uh, the outcomes, uh, all these jobs that I mentioned, as I'll give you an example of a telecommunication network planner. If you uh, were to uh, 
go for a job, the salary range is very good in this uh, industry, and you're looking at anywhere between sixty to seventy-five thousand dollars per year, and uh, you'll be working on uh, NBNs or wireless networks, for example. And there are a lot of companies who are actually looking for telecommunication network planners. And some of the companies, namely, I'll tell you, is uh, Data3, for example, Telstra, Vodafone, Optus. They all need to. Uh, network planners, and uh, there's always a huge demand for uh, network planners and network engineers or technical officers in, in this field. So if you complete this course, uh, I'm very, very confident that, you know, most of the students who actually finish this course with a good grade, they actually tend to find a job themselves, or there's so many jobs available online if you search for telecommunication technologist or network planner, and uh, yeah. So any, any further questions you might have about this course, please feel free to comment in the box below and uh, Mangrish will take uh, your questions and I'll be more than happy to answer your questions. And uh, this course uh, is available, as I said, in most of the cities in Australia. If not, you can get in touch with us and we'll advise you of all the colleges that are offering this course. Uh, thank you very much, guys, and uh, hope to get more and more questions out of you. Uh, and hope to see you again next fortnight. Uh, over to you, Mangrish. Thank you. Thank you so much, Mickey. It indeed shows that it, it's one of your favorite courses because the amount of information uh, you have given is, is extremely well. So thank you. Thank, thank you. you so thank much. you very much. Uh, okay, guys, those people who just recently joined us on our Facebook or YouTube, just want to tell you guys again that there are different trade courses what we are covering today. As we said from the beginning, we are talking about automotive, telecommunication, electrical, cookery, wall and floor tiling and carpentry. So if you have any questions regarding these particular courses or if you have any questions regarding other trade courses, feel free to just message us. We are going through one by one um, and we'll definitely try to cover. If we can't cover those questions right now through our Facebook or YouTube live, we'll definitely get back to you. One of our marketing people or one of our education consultants will try to be, you know, get in touch with you as soon as possible. So please uh, stay tuned. There is, as Mickey has given and Rujda has given, you know, extremely good information. I'm sure it will be very valuable for you guys. Now, after automotive and telecommunication, we would like to go to electrical. Uh, Priyanka, Priyanka is basically based in Sydney. Um, Priyanka, can you please tell us about electrical trade courses, please? Thank you, Mangirish. I'm Priyanka and I'm based on Sydney office. So I'll be talking about electrician course. Uh, now, who can do this course? Basically, it's, it's the same for all these trade courses. Either you have to be a year 12 and you're here on tourist visa, or you're already studying certain courses, say bachelor's or master's, and you want to go ahead and do it additionally on, on a concurrent study, or you're on your way towards four at five, you can also do this course. Now, most of the time when students come in, the first question they ask is not the entry requirements, not, uh, you know, not how to how to progress in the future. They're like, what do electrician do? Because I've had a lot of uh, students who would come in and ask for courses like painting and they don't really have an idea. They think it's a drawing or whatever. So because they want, they're looking at investing into it, but they want to know what this is. And I, I'm really seeing a lot of uh, change in types of the questions I get from students because they want to know what will my job look like? What will I do? So basically I want to say is, if you're looking to electrician, it's a never ending career because you know, the construction, especially in Australia is never going to end. And wherever there's construction, there is the need of electrician, be it in office, be it in building and construction. So the, the demand for electrician is a lot. So of course, if you're choosing this course, I don't think I'm making a wrong decision. Now, moving on to this course, really, there are two parts of electrician, which is uh, one is electro technology electrician and the other one is automotive electrical technology. Now with electronic electro technology electrician, there are uh, certificate three, certificate four and advanced diploma. Now, what happens is if you're looking at only getting a qualification and start working as an electrician, you can only do certificate three. But if you're looking at a career progress, like, you know, you start as an electri electri electrical technician, then you want to move to a supervisor level and then you want to become a senior technical officer. That's how you progress in the career. So if you're looking at certificate three electro technology electrician, then the duration of this course is uh, 65 weeks. And the career outcome of this course would include electrician, um, lift electrician, vending machine, uh, server. But uh, if you want to move move more up in career, that's when you can do advanced diploma of electrical engineering, which will now improve a lot of career prospect because 
being as an electrician, you would make certain, like say thousand dollars per job. But if you move on to like senior technical officer, you're looking at $2,000 per job. Now, according to recent survey by seek.com, we're looking, we're anticipating at least 4.9% of growth in this sector. So that is massive, you know, and according to average salary that an Australian uh, tradies make is almost 85,972 for electricians. So imagine people who are doing this corporate jobs. And for that, you have to do bachelor's, master's, but for you to be able to making that money, you can even do certificate three and be making a lot of money. Now, moving on to certificate three in automotive electrical technology. Uh, this is also again, a 92 weeks course. So if you're looking into this course, you, you can be uh, an automotive electrical master technician. So there's more of an automation uh, than a manual electrician job. So these are two different criteria. Now, if you're looking at job ready program, uh, most of the students ask that, okay, I, I finished certificate three, I become eligible for uh, temporary resident, but will I be able to find job so that I can meet criteria for job ready program? The answer is yes, because in Australia, the construction industry is a lot and you can find job easily. I've seen a lot of students of uh, which I have recently placed, I mean, say one year back, they're already into job ready program and they're finding it easy to find jobs. So there's no struggle in really uh, getting the job for job ready program, which is essential for you to move on in your career. And that's about it with the electrician uh, courses. If you have more uh, questions, we can definitely help you with this one. And uh, please get in touch with any of our admission consultant, uh, depending on which state are you, and we'll be more than happy to help you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Priyanka. Uh, as you just recently or just said that, you know, the amount of money they earn, which is 85 plus, whatever. When we ask the electrician to come to our house for a normal job, they would anywhere between 100 to $200, depending on that, because it's a skillful job. You have to have proper qualification license to do certain work. So, of course, that is a well-paid job. Thank you so much for that information. Um, now, after that one, after electrical, uh, we would... Of course, there are so many people or students ask about cookery because uh, that is that's what we call a hot course or or you know favorite course of students. Uh, so, Diksha, can you please tell us information about cookery? Sure, Mangrish. Um, thank you so much for the introduction. And hi, guys. My name is Diksha, and I'm based in the Melbourne office uh, for Aussie Group. Um, so today, I'm going to talk about uh, basically cookery. Cookery is already a very popular course amongst the students. So I'm just going to cover the. Uh, brief things that some of them have already discussed and also what uh, different is there in cookery. So obviously for the background thing, like, you know, who all can apply for this course? Anyone who's already on student visa can apply for this course. Obviously anyone who is here on tourist visa can apply for this course. Um, anyone who are just going to start their TR can also apply, you know, they can study a certificate three and they can, you know, um, do their GRP and all those things. So these students can also apply for this course, but not for a, a person like we do get uh, like students like their TR is going to just end like they're like, okay, our TR is ending next one. Can we do a trade course? Can we do cookery course? So unfortunately, because um, as others have already discussed how you need those number of hours to complete your skill assessment and all those things. So you cannot do that after completing your TR and you need certain Certain TR, uh, like you need certain time on your TR to do uh, these courses. So that is one aspect. Otherwise, if you already are in year 12 pass out, like you already have your completed your year 12, and as Rushta, as Miki, as Franka said, like the basic requirement is 5.5, no less than five in English, uh, or you can give an LLN test. Um, and on the basis of that, you can get enrolled in um, in these courses. Now, what when it comes to cookery, what can you actually study? So you can study a certificate three. Um, you can study like in commercial cookery, you can study a uh, certificate four in commercial cookery. You can also study pedestry. You can also study um, then after, you know, certificate three and four in pedestry, you can do a diploma of hospitality management. You can do an advanced diploma of hospitality management. So you can obviously, um, if you want, like as Mickey said, that if you want TR, like students do come and ask, do we get TR? So yes, if you study 92 weeks, like which is 92 weeks to two years, you definitely get TR. So you can study a cert three, cert four and diploma of hospitality management to qualify for the um, GWS, which is uh, TR in this case of um, trade course. Uh, and also uh, you can do pedestry and baking. So all these courses, they come under the, um, under the like cookery courses only. 
Now, if you only do a cert three course, you can be qualified to become a cook. When you do a cert three and four, you can be a qualified to become a chef. Um, now, what is exactly in a uh, certificate three in commercial cookery? Like what? is covered there in that. So um, usually uh, in all the certificate three in cookery, what they cover is how to use the equipment, um, like different cooking techniques, kitchen hygiene, food safety laws. So these things are the basic one that are covered in certificate three. And what they usually cover in certificate four is managing staff, budgeting, ordering, and checking inventory. So it depends on what are you actually looking forward to make it into your career like are you just do you just want to be a cook so you can do only cert three do you want to be a chef you can do cert three and cert four if you want to become a rest restaurant manager or you're looking forward to move to higher position like executive chef and all those things you can do um, these diplomas like you can do a diploma of hospitality management and you can do an advanced diploma which will obviously give you the skills to manage the overall um, atmosphere of a kitchen or maybe any restaurant or cafe right um, now when it comes to few future pathways like what 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 can be the future pathways okay so somebody has completed cert three cert four and diploma and advanced diploma so what else do they want to study in this um area to you know um increase their knowledge and increase their job um, abilities or increase all these opportunities for them so they can certainly do a bachelor of hospitality management which is covered like if you have done cert three cert four diploma then you can go and do a bachelor of hospitality management or if you're really interested like i have seen a lot of people like who want to open their own restaurants on you know they're um, interested that they want to uh, work like have their own cafe or something like that then you can do a bachelor of business as well so those things like i think we have already covered about these degrees before so i don't want to go into detail but yes you have a future pathway with this now um coming to jrp i think everything has been covered uh, brilliantly uh, by my colleagues rushta pranka and miki just the same thing that 360 hours you have to uh, work while studying um and uh, there are different colleges that are offering the same so you can contact us if you need any information about jrp you should definitely get in touch with us our consultants they can guide you our um our, our migration agent they can guide you towards it and it will help you um to understand like where are the opportunities available and um accordingly you can choose the right college for you similarly um after like after you complete the 360 hours like you know you move towards your gsw and then after that you do 1725 hours to get the full skill assessment so that is the whole grp part i think it has already been covered really well um now where can you exactly work once you do these courses so you can work in cafes hotels resort function halls casinos event spaces there are too many like hospitality industry is like one of the most famous like famous thing like a lot of economy is working on hospitality industry and tourism of Australia so obviously you are in the right place you are in Australia you are actually in the right place to um, work in this industry and also it is available in all the cities like it's not just Melbourne Sydney there are so many beautiful cities Brisbane Gold Coast like there's so many opportunities like in all the cities so wherever you want to settle whichever environment you like wherever you're getting that job opportunity you can just go for it you don't have to worry about uh, job security and all those things and um so what are the outcomes that you do get after um studying these courses so you can be a qualified chef for cook you can be a supervisor you can be a function event manager you can be an executive or head chef or you can be a food and beverage manager so all these people have different various roles that they perform in the company like wherever they're working <laughs> hotel or restaurant they perform various different roles so um, accordingly whatever your interest area is um, if you are really interested into just working into kitchen then obviously you should do a cert three and cert four but you're really interested to become you know take that leadership position ahead or if you're really interested to become a sort um, a restaurant manager there are also qualifications where you can specialize in certain things so if you have done a cert three cert four and you want to specialize into restaurant management then you can do a diploma of hospitality management in your specialization can be a restaurant management so um if you have these kind of interests definitely um all this group is the place for you um you can come to any of our offices our consultants are well versed um they can definitely guide you accordingly and as um people have already they've emphasized a lot how like how much money like after completing a cert three four and diploma you can earn rather than you know you putting that money into a bachelor's or a master's and all those things so uh, the usual um uh, like when like when even we were checking like you know how much a chef earns or how much a cooks earn so a chef salary can be you know approximately from fifty five thousand to seventy thousand. but as i said like if you 
are if you are looking for leadership positions or if you are want to become a manager and all those things and you get gather certain experience you can definitely become a head or ex, uh, executive chef and that that will help you to earn around 100k as well so you know the money proposition is really good here so um, definitely if someone is really interested to be like they want to um, be a good cook chef or anything that they want to manage their own business this is the course for you thank you mangresh perfect thank you thank you so much diksha uh, hospitality is such a industry which i don't think will close at all uh, forget about covid time of course once we come out of it we will start uh, you know roaming around and going for to different destinations to for holidays and stuff so of course it will come back soon uh, guys we have uh, our migration champion parth as well so if you have any migration related questions feel free to send it to us uh, i have already received so many so i will try to cover those but before that uh, there was a comment on uh, on <clears throat> youtube and priyanka it was for you uh, when you were talking about electrical course um, penkun was asking where can i study electrical course uh, penkun you can study in any of the states whichever you like uh, priyanka has taken that because she feels she can you know include more information about that but feel free if whatever state you are in feel free to get in touch with us and we'll definitely you know give you the the right advice there uh, path uh, i would like to your question uh, i'd like to ask you a question now because there were so many uh, migration related questions which were coming up uh, uh, pragnesh patel was asking us previously what are the popular trade courses if 485 finish and looking for student visa uh, pragnesh i think i i can tell you that one as well depending it's whatever the the you know the favorite or the top courses we are already talking about it but sometimes it it comes to the student which which he or she would really like to you know invest their time and their resource and their money so um, of course we can cover the migration aspects later but uh, when it comes to when your when your question comes in that uh, which one is you should be looking for i think that question is for yourself as in which one you feel really interested in because as we are talking about several courses uh, please ask yourself if you need any advice you can get in touch with any of our offices and we'll definitely get back to you um uh, uh path one more question for you i got my 491 chef nomination approval and also invite from home affairs but should i wait for 190 invitation that's tarun gaba is asking that okay yeah um, look in that case um, if you are looking at 190 because this year's quota has been reduced a lot um, it reduced to i think half or one third nearly and looking at that invitations under 190 program will be difficult and it's possible that when state look into that you might have been already invited in the 491 program they may not renominate you so i recommend that you better go ahead with 491 option because this year um, it looks like the state governments will become more stricter i mean they will have some higher requirements for 190 program and also looking at the quota it might be difficult to get to get an invite if you really wanted to wait maybe possibly you can wait until end of this month and see whether you uh, whether uh, what are the like the requirements for the state nomination if it looks bit easier maybe for 190 for you then you may be possibly able to apply however you cannot let your uh, 491 invitation go um so looking at the the process and the planning migration planning levels for this year i think 491 is the right option for you as of now so you can go ahead or if you wanted to wait maybe for this month to, to see what states are saying or the requirements you can possibly wait for 2 3 weeks if your invitation is still to expire if if it has a longer validity excellent thank you thank you so much path um I think we've we've answered that question. Now coming back to the courses, uh, num- we, the next course which we would like to take uh, talk about is wall and floor tiling. Naman, can you please tell us about this course? Thanks, Mangresh. Hi everyone. Uh, I am Naman from Aussies Group Perth. So I would be discussing about the wall and floor tiling. So first of all, who can do this course? As we have already discussed, the anyone who has done the year twelve and who ha- who has been here on tourist visa, they are eligible to apply for this course. Suppose you are doing your bachelor or masters, you can also study this course on concurrent basis. And we have already discussed what is the meaning of the concurrent here. 
now moving to uh, what you can what you can become as by doing this uh, wall and floor tiling course so we have the certificate 3 in wall and floor tile, uh, tiling course this is for 2 years and this course uh, forms a part of the construction plumbing and is for people who want to work in the wall and floor tiling trade the students who want to gain the knowledge and skills to lay tiles for domestic, commercial, and public buildings. So this is the best option for them to start their career as a certified trade uh, tiler or wall and floor tiler. So moving to the JRP. In this, uh, the, the JRP, again, it is a four-step employment-based skill assessment program that will provide you the opportunity to demonstrate <laughs> your skills and job in Australian workplace in your nominated occupation. Like in this, it would be as a tiler before you apply for your migration in Australia. Followed with the four steps, it would be the provisional skills assessment, job-ready employment, job-ready workplace assessment, and the job-ready final assessment. Uh, in the step one, the provisional skills uh, assessment, you need evidence of minimum 360 hours of employment or a vocational placement relevant to your qualification. Moving to the step two, it is the job ready employment, which will enable you to gain experience in an Australian workplace to develop your skills in the nominated occupation. And here it would be as a uh, Tyler, and you must complete at least uh, 1,725 hours of paid employment over a minimum of 12 months from your JRE start date. And you can do this on your 485 visa. The step three is the job ready workplace assessment, which will determine whether you are working at the required skill level in the Australian workplace for your nominated occupation. Moving to the step four, which is the final step of the JRP and the successful job ready final assessment will give you a skill assessment outcome and you can, you can use that application for your independent skilled migration visa. So this is all about the JRFF and moving to the Outcomes and the occupation. The occupation titles may include architecture tilers, wall and floor tiler, and the designers and the renovators for the house. So Australia is always in huge demands in the construction sector. So it is also the best course if you want to look make your career in construction sector. The exciting career opportunity include your employment as a wall tiler, floor tiler, self-employed contractor, or you can also become a project management in the field of renovation. You can become a tiling company employer. You can become a subcontract contract tiler. And I have seen few of the clients who has, uh, who has just passed out this course and done all this job ready program. They are even working as the sale representative tiling products manufacturing or even in retail industry. And otherwise you can also work as a covering work in residential and commercial application. So coming about the job, uh, your salary. So as we know that Australia is always in the huge demand in the construction sector. So it depends. It starts with the 70 to 80,000 of your package. So which is, which is quite good. Um, that's all about the wall and floor tiling. So thanks, Mangrish. Thank you. Thank you so much, Naman. Uh, thank you. Uh, you. You've covered wall and floor tiling. Of course, we have many more questions coming up. Uh, Path, we have so many questions coming up. We'll finish the last education point and then we'll come back to the migration questions uh, because there are a few questions there for education as well. So the last uh, course, what we're going to, or the trade course, what we're going to talk about is, of course, carpentry, as we said. Uh, Manjinder from Adelaide office is going to talk about us. Manji, Manjinder, back to you. Can you please tell us? Thank you. Thank you so much, Mangrish. Well, today I'm talking about uh, carpentry. So before that, uh, my name is Manjendra. I work for as an education counselor in Adelaide office. See, I, I see like everyone talk about all the other trades, but uh, carpentry is a, a very fascinating occupation up among the migration community at the moment. Specifically, as we see, this, this occupation was mainly dominated by the native Australians before. But in the recent years, if you see, there are so many migrants, they are getting into carpentry. The reason is that it's a, one of the highest growing trade occupation. I was looking at the stats yesterday and uh, the top, it, it's on number one and it's got an annual growth of 11.7%. So it means it's growing rapidly. Uh, so that's why that more and more students, specifically the international students wants to get into this occupation so they can get the, gain the uh, qualification 
and then later on use uh, that and work as a carpenter so when it comes to the eligibility criteria that who can who and who cannot uh, study this occupation uh, this specific uh, qualification i would say anyone who has 18 years or above uh, they got an international student visa to study here or if they got a visitor visa and they have don't have any no further stay condition imposed on the visa they can also apply uh, for the student visa and study this course anyone uh, who is studying uh, higher education for example bachelor or masters and want to create a second path and want to get extra skill they can also study we do have colleges who are providing concurrent studies for carpentry and many other trade courses as well more importantly uh, for english there is always an english requirement involved when you want to study in australia if you are an international student you need to have at least 5.5 in alts or equivalent in pte or any other format of english if you don't have that but you have good english we can help you to arrange a lnn test with the respected institute and if they, you pass that you can start your certificates no when it comes to the qualification in carpentry we have two different qualifications the first one is a certificate 3 in carpentry and the second one is a certificate 3 in carpentry and jointry uh, because there are two different occupations later on that you can access so uh, if you do certificate 3 you become uh, in carpentry you become a carpenter if you do a certificate 3 in carpentry and jointry you become a carpenter and jointer moving forward uh, once you complete these qualifications, of course, the next step is to apply for your graduate visa, which is subclass 485. But to be eligible for 485 students, you need to have at least 360 hours of a vocational placement done during the courses, and that will make you eligible to apply for four, uh, subclass 485. For trade courses, um, most of us, we didn't mention one thing, but I like to mention that there are two different 485 uh, subclass criteria uh, visas. For trade course, you will get a visa for 18 months, one and a half year. And once you uh, once you are on that visa, you can do go for job ready program with the respected or your choice uh, with you know with your employer. Uh, again, like uh, Naman already mentioned very clearly there are four steps to complete the job ready program once you complete the job ready program you get a full skill assessment and you become a qualified carpenter or qualified carpenter and jointer so there is another thing like uh, when it comes to like it's a fascinated it's, it's a trade course it got a pathway for future skill occupation uh, what are the financial benefits for doing this course and I searched uh, a little about that. And yesterday I was checking the different job seeker websites and on Indeed itself, there are 956 jobs available at the moment within Australia. And uh, every state have uh, numbers in triple digits or two digits. So means there are so many jobs available. So if you go into this course, of course, there is really, really good chance that you will gain an employment later on. Uh, what do you just need to do? Be confident and complete your education within trust. And if you have interest in any of the trade courts, we, we show you that you will get your, uh, you know, you can achieve what you are targeting for. Um, about the wages, really fascinating, Mangrish. I was looking at the data. It's not only the highest growing occupation, it's the fifth highest getting paid of occupation as well. People are getting between 60 grand to 80 grand per year. And if you work casually only, you can earn between $40 per hour, Australian dollars, to $60 per hour. Moreover, once you complete the, uh, this qualification, get your jobs, you can start as a carpenter, you can work as a sole trader, you can work as a contractor. If you complete additional qualification, like before, I think uh, uh, someone mentioned in the panel, if you can go for a diploma in construction and uh, in construction as well, and then you can work as a supervisor or a project manager or a project supervisor as a carpenter. Moreover, if you achieve additional qualifications, you can also work as a builder because carpentry basically is all about construction. If you go to the car construction sites, 80 to 90% of work uh, of the work building a home is done by the carpenters. So it's a really great occupation, guys. 
If you have any questions, if you have a question like how to get in, what are the colleges who are providing it, get in touch with any of our office and one of our education, qualified education consultant, they will be more than happy to help you with that. And I would also like to mention here that we do have colleges here who are promising and giving a guarantee that if you come through Aussies, they are promising for a job ready program later on. So that's the additional incentives that you can get through us. For Adelaide viewers specifically, if you do any trade course through us, we guarantee that we will help you to get your 360 hours work placement done if the college don't provide you that thing. So for any other questions, yeah, get back to us. We, we, we are here to help you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Manjinder. It was a very, um, you know, in-depth information about, about the course. So thank you so much for that. Uh, Path, coming back to you now, when a student comes and finishes Cert 3, Cert 4 and Diploma of any trade course, um, how many weeks do they need um, to apply for the graduate visa? Um, actually, for any trade course, uh, it can be any trade course, it can be cookery, world, like for carpenters, or can be wall floor tiler, whatever it is, any trade courses, uh, applicants are required to complete 360 hours of uh, work, actually. Mm -hmm. That can be through uh, paid employment at um, any workplace, or if it is part of your course itself, so when you are doing certificate three, four, if it is a part of your course, which is known as vocational placement, which can be unpaid um, kind of internship that can also be considered however if you um, go and work with any employer on a voluntary or voluntarily basis that work cannot be considered so if it is part of the course then yes it can be unpaid experience but if it is not part of the course if you are just doing for your sake of um, getting your higher skills something like that then it must be paid employment then only that experience can be considered and that experience the minimum requirement is 360 hours that can be during your qualification or it can be post qualification as well but that should be within last three years of uh, the application for the provisional skills assessment so um, as uh, manjitder was saying that the applicants are required to complete 360 hours of ex employment that is to apply for a provisional skills assessment and that is the requirement to get the temporary graduate visa 485 once you get that visa the applicants are required to work for one year that is known as a job ready program for steps program so you are required to complete 1725 hours of work paid work and yep. once you complete that then you are eligible for a full skill assessment which is a mandatory requirement for a point tested visa general skill migration visas so yep. most of the applicants which generally look at point tested visas for that skill assessment a full skill assessment is a compulsory requirement so there is a pathway like you complete your certificate three four diploma during that you complete 360 hours of work <laughs> Then you apply for a provisional skills assessment. Then you apply for a temporary graduate visa, which will be granted for 18 months. In that 18 months, you complete one year of program, job ready program. You will get a skill assessment. Then you look at for permanent residency options. Perfect. Now, just before that, the, the number of weeks that particular course or a package goes on, uh, there was a little bit of confusion with the students whether it has to be a 92 or it can be 80 as well. There was a little bit confusion there. So can you please tell us about that? There was Joel on YouTube is asking, I have a question. I want to do automotive at TAFE in Adelaide, but Cert 3, Cert 4 and Diploma altogether only add up to 80 weeks teaching duration. And, and we said that it's 92 weeks. It should be 92 weeks. So can you please clarify that one? Yeah, sure. Look, generally, when we look at the course duration, we don't look at that. Sorry, we lost your voice. When you, when you look at uh, any qualification, you don't look at the teaching period. You look at the registration of that course. So how many weeks that course is registered for? Because when you look for any course, like suppose if you look at a bachelor's degree, which university published that this is a four years course or three years course, so you don't actually study for entire three years. You will have a summer break or maybe other breaks for three, four months of time every year generally. So same way. When you are doing this certificate, three certificate for a diploma, you will have gaps in between, but it's a combined package course. So what you have to look into is you will have to go to Crycos website. That's a government website. You just go there, you enter your course name or a Crycos code of your course and see how many weeks that course is registered for. As long as that course is registered for 
in total 92 weeks there is suppose certificate 3 is valid for 52 weeks which is generally one year but then your teaching period period is not generally for one year of time something like that so that generally most of the certificate threes are registered for 52 weeks certificate for is 26 weeks and then another diploma for 26 weeks that is all together making which is 104 104 weeks but minimum requirement is 92 weeks that way you have to see whether you are meeting that 92 weeks of course requirement or not Cool. Thank you. Thank you so much, uh, Joel. I think we've, we've, you know, clarified that. If you still have few questions, please get in touch with Manjinder or Tejas from our Adelaide office, and they'll be more than happy to, you know, solve your query. Um, there is one question which I'm getting on Facebook. It's a generalized education question. Please answer my question here. He says, Rohan, certificate for building and construction. Uh, is that a trade course or not? Anyone, <laughs> you want to do it from migration side, feel free. Okay. Um, look, generally, building construction, it is, in a way, it's considered as a trade course. However, generally, when you look at, you are looking for mainly a certificate three courses. When you are looking for any particular occupation, most of the trade occupation requires certificate three level qualification. And then you add up your skills. And that's where, as Manjinder was also, also saying that if you do some additional skills, you get some higher level of uh, maybe skills and then packages in, in terms of salary. Otherwise, most of the trade occupation, when you look at, it requires at least certificate three level of qualification. So major qualification, which are for trade, are certificate three level qualification. But this is also considered as a trade qualification. But then that generally will require a certificate three as a basic qualification as well. Cool. Thank you. Thank you so much. There are a few guys are, are putting their mobile numbers. Guys, we would like to request you to just message us personally on our you know Facebook page and send us the message with your phone number. Uh, there are so many things happening on the account uh, outside when it's outside. You're, you're providing your number. We don't want that to be misused by someone else. So we would request you to just message us your mobile number and your query and we'll definitely get back to you. Uh, Part in, in the recent past, I've been hearing so many different things, uh, you know, so many changes which are coming in and so many things which are, you know, in the future going to change. Can you please tell us in general, what are the things which is in aspect of trade courses or education it is going to impact in, in migration? Yeah, sure. Um, look, when you look at the recent budget, because as of now, um, or whenever you look at any uh, permanent residency option. So you will have to look at the migration uh, program uh, planning actually for that years. When you look at this financial year, the quota has been reduced to a lot. And looking at that for trade courses, I have seen that generally for most of the applicants studying a trade course, they are not able to score that many points which are required for 189 visa. Like recently when department was selecting people for most of the occupation, the cutoff was going on around 90 points and most of the applicants under trade category, they are not able to score that much. Like I've seen most of them, they are scoring either 85 or below that. Now looking at the current year, current financial year quota, uh, because it has been reduced to even one third for 189 suppose category. Looking at that, the cutoff will be most likely 95 or higher, or you may say the department might not, might not even invite under trade occupations. You never know. If that happens, then 189 will be difficult. And that's where I can, what I can recommend to trade applicants uh, or applicants studying trade courses will be looking uh, to look for state sponsored visas such as either 190 or 491. Or if you are already working with the employer for some time, at least two years full time if you are working or equivalent part time if you are work you could possibly look at employer sponsored visa options where you can continue working with the same employer and that can also lead to permanent residency because most of the trade occupations are part of medium to long term skills strategic list and that's where that uh, visa can like the employer sponsored visa under high demand occupation that is mlt ssl list will lead to permanent residency as well so instead of going maybe for regional visas 491, you could possibly also apply for employer sponsored visa if your employer is happy to sponsor you. And generally, most of the time, if you're working for an employer, if the business is go going good, business will also require actually your skills in the business. And if you are also getting a benefit that way that you don't have to relocate anyway, secure job, something like that. I think that is also a good option. So 
i think it the time may come in maybe in this next 6 months a year that major people under trade uh, trade category will have to look for either the regional 491 visa or uh, the employer sponsored visa because 189 i don't think um, you will be able to score that many points and same way for 190 program as well most of the states i have seen that they ask for maybe 2 years 3 years of experience or maybe high points something like that so that is the main change otherwise when it looks to when when you look into the job employment opportunities i think after this post covid uh, um, time if you look at i think the demand of trade occupation will increase again um, and uh, as per the employment opportunities there will be much more options uh, to look for jobs in relevant field Thank you so much, Path. Uh, there is there is a student called Ankit Joshi. He's just trying to reach out to us through through YouTube, and he's got a query. He's in India right now. Ankit, I would like to request you if you could please send us a message on Facebook, or you can check the links and you know send us through your message there, and we'll definitely get in touch um, with you. So feel free to send us a message, and we'll definitely get back to you because you're all offshore. So you're in India. There are different. There are few different rules which applies to you. So we'll definitely let you know the. specific advice in that category uh guys we are running out of time but <laughs> before leaving i would like to thank you each one of you for your time uh i know it was everybody has you know given in depth information about different courses par thank you so much for shedding more light on to migration side um guys uh, as we said victoria when we're talking about victoria of course we are working from home of course our offices are closed but if you are in other states feel free to get in touch with our colleagues in their states uh, in victoria you can reach out to us by either sending a message and we will reply you back or you can call us and we'll definitely look after your needs uh, when it comes to education or migration um have a great evening have a lovely weekend and see you guys in two weeks thank you